Howdy, friends. Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, please consider sending it my way. Just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and hit the button to submit your story. And thank you. I have a short glitch that happened to me that may not seem like it was that big of a deal, but I wasn't the only one to experience it. So it's one of those minuscule but also really crazy because it wasn't just me involved situations. My sister and I lived together for a while in a two-bedroom apartment, and we would split rent between the two of us. The way that we would pay the rent was that she would give me the money to put into my account, I would then deposit it, and write a direct check to the rental office, and that was that. That way, we only had to do one check, and I had checks already, so it was just the easier way to do it. The rental office was incredibly anal about getting the rent checks early, and by that, I meant that they wanted the rent to be paid on the first, and no earlier. Because of this, the week that we had to pay, I would write the check, and then clip it to the refrigerator, and one of us would take it up to the rental office on the first of the month. In the month in question, I had done what I usually did, and had written out the check and clipped it onto the fridge. Unfortunately, there was an issue at my sister's office with the payroll, and they had a delay in payment by a few days. Because of this, she wasn't going to be paid until the 3rd, so she wouldn't have been able to get me the money until then, which meant that we would be paying rent on the 4th. The rental office also had the whole due on the 1st considered late on the 5th, so we were going to be down to the wire. I know this all sounds really kind of confusing and convoluted, but it's important to understand the timing and the process by which we had to do things. So, she got paid, she gave me the cash, and I went to the bank to deposit it on the 3rd, so that we could run up the check on the 4th and be on time still. I told her to remind me to grab the check in the morning, so I could take it in on my way to work. Unfortunately, she did not remind me, and I completely forgot about it until I was sitting at my desk at work. I was obviously cursing myself and freaking out because they weren't going to be in the office when I got off work, and if they didn't have the check in hand by the time they locked the door to the office, they added like $150 onto the rent for that month. I was not willing to pay the extra. so. I told my boss that I needed to leave at lunch for a personal thing, and he was fine with it. I kind of felt bad for dipping out early, just to get a check into the office for my rent, but I figured it was better than paying all the extra. Lunch came around, I left to go get the rent check, and was confused when I got home. The check wasn't where I had left it on the fridge. My first thought was that it had fallen but I checked around the fridge and couldn't seem to find it. Then, my second thought was that maybe my sister had grabbed it when she got up and taken it in before she went into work. I went ahead and called up to the office and asked them if they had gotten the rent check for us, which it was a bit strange to have to ask, but they looked and said that they did in fact have this month's rent, and that we were good. When my sister got home that evening, I thanked her for taking the rent check up to the office for me, and then she told me that she hadn't. She said that when she had gotten up that morning, the check was gone, so she assumed that I had remembered. I told her that I had forgotten to grab it, and I actually took a half day off of work to get home and get it in so it wouldn't be late. Neither of us took the check up to the office, but yet they had it. For the record, I genuinely believe that she was not messing with me, because it's not like her, and I wasn't running on autopilot or anything like that. Neither of us have any idea how it got into the office, but it did. Like I said at the beginning, I know it's not that big of a glitch, but 
it helped us out quite a bit. So I guess thank you to whoever runs the simulation. At the end of my freshman year of college, I packed up my apartment. I put all of my special knickknacks and mementos in one box, being careful to wrap everything in bubble wrap, and then I taped it with packing tape. And I mean I wound half a roll around this cardboard box to make sure that everything would be safe. I then went back to my parents' house for the summer. My old bedroom had a walk-in closet, and in the back of the closet there was a small half-door that went under the eaves for more storage. I put the box in the storage space, shut and locked the door, and I didn't open it again until I went back to college. When I unpacked my box, there was this disc I had never seen before. It was a flat disc with a divot in the middle of it, so it would spin like a top and there was a design on it that would reflect the light as it spun. It wasn't new, as it had a few superficial scratches on the shiny surface. I had never seen it before or anything like it in my life. I figured it had to belong to my roommate, and got into my box by a mistake, even though I packed and taped the box myself. It seemed weird, but... I just figured it somehow got into my stuff without me seeing it. We didn't live together this year, but she came to visit soon enough, and I said, Oh, hey, I think this must be yours. I showed her the disc, and she said it wasn't hers, and that she had never seen it before. Okay, weird. But I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. I just set it out with my collection of odd knickknacks and forgot about the whole thing. Right at the end of my second school year, I ran into an old classmate from high school. We hadn't seen each other or spoken since graduation. We ended up reconnecting and dating. I eventually married and then divorced him. We broke up when I went out of state to another college as my last one was only a two-year program. I didn't like the school and left after one semester. When I came home, I started hanging out with my future ex-husband again, as well as his roommate. They had their own place, and I was living at my parents, so we would always hang out at their place. Except one day, I had the roommate to my house. We were hanging out in my room, and he spots the disc. And he was like, Oh, hey, did C, the future ex-husband, give you that? I thought it was lost. Immediately, I was like, WTF. I said no, it appeared randomly in my stuff after my first year in college. He went on to describe the scratches on it and how they got there. He spotted the disc from across the room and could not have seen these tiny surface scratches from that distance. But they were distinct and he described them exactly. It turns out, this sat on their coffee table for a long time, until it disappeared around the same time it appeared in my stuff, in a box that was taped up in a locked room. A year after I last saw C at graduation, and a year before I ran into him again. I have no explanation how it got there. If the box had been opened and retaped, it would have been obvious. You pull that much tape off of a cardboard box, and the layers of the box will rip off too. No one had access to that room. And the idea that someone broke into a house, broke into a locked room in the house, opened, and then retaped the box without marring the box at all, just to put a small, non important item into that box, is ludicrous and I still have yet to hear a rational explanation. I guess that this was my first glitch. I've had others since, but this was before there was a name for it, the mid-90s, and it's bothered me ever since. A couple of days ago, 
I answered a question on the Ask Reddit subreddit. The question being, Hikers of Reddit, what has been the most effed up thing you've ever seen? This is the story. It was the time I went to Niagara Falls, so I picture this for environmental reasons. It's summer, two days before your trip to Niagara, and there's a bunch of rain that causes mudslides, and the day you get there, it's extremely sunny and hot. During this trip, my husband and I decided to go on a hike slash walk through some easy trails on the upper Whirlpool Trails, Niagara River Whirlpool. We went there because the trees provided amazing shade, and it's right next to the rapids of the falls, so it felt refreshing. So we started going down the trail, and it started getting cooler and a bit harder terrain to maneuver yourself around, and my steel toe boots started to weigh more for some reason. But the lower that we went, the fresher it felt, so that was no problem for us because it was hot up there and fresher downwards, so we kept going. But I guess we went a little too low, because there was suddenly nobody around us. We came upon some signs and a little fence that told us not to go in that direction, because there were mudslides due to the rain, and we wouldn't be able to go to the Devil's Hole moderately safely. We weren't trying to get to the Devil's Hole, we're a bit superstitious and know not to venture too far in to disturb the woods. And let's be honest here, a place that's called the Devil's Hole, plus some warning signs that said not to go in that direction, it sounds like it's straight out of a horror movie. I told that to my husband, he agreed, and then out of nowhere this man is behind us. I have no idea how he snuck right behind us, or how he heard our conversation, but he said hi to us, and told us that he has lived there his whole life, and some little mudslides have never stopped him. Then, he recommended that we keep going. He jumped the fence, and on he went to the distance of the trail. And for some odd reason, his presence calmed us. I guess seeing another human was reassuring. So, we crossed the fence. The trails were really cool, literally. It was getting cooler the more that we walked, but my steel-toed boots started to feel heavier than before. There were mudslides, broken trees, eroding rocks, and a mildly foul stench of decomposition. Maybe some predator killed its prey and didn't eat it, I thought. And, weirdly enough, there was no sign of the man that went in before us, we went right after he went, so how was he that fast that now we couldn't see him? I had a lot of thoughts because of the environment. It felt so weird that it made me anxious and scared, especially when I started feeling like something was staring at me. My husband was also feeling nervous because he was walking faster and humming. He started to walk way ahead of me, and he saw it first. The hole. And when he stopped to look at it, I felt it. This immense flight or hide reaction. He felt it too because immediately he grabbed my wrist before I could see anything, and he power walked us back the way we came through. I was panicking because the look on his face was horrible. What did he see? I asked and tried to talk, but... Then he told me not to look back and to just keep walking straight. And I did. Why? Well, one, because I know better than to look back. And two, he wasn't humming. I looked at him and he was quiet, but I could still hear the humming. Aside from the humming, everything was quiet. So quiet that I started to pay attention to the environment again. It was cold. The trees looked rather decayed than broken, and there was a decomposing animal on the side of the trail. What kind of predator kills but then doesn't eat their prey? And at this height, rocks shouldn't be eroding yet, in such an odd pattern too. But especially what convinced me that something was off was that stare that I felt behind me. Once we got out of the forest, 
I didn't dare to ask, but once we were back in our state, and I felt more secure, I asked what he saw and he wouldn't answer me, so I left it at that. Ignorance is bliss after all, and I'd rather not burden myself with such knowledge. What happened in Niagara stayed in Niagara. Before posting this, I got curious as to what my husband saw, and I showed him my comment retelling the story. And he stops and says, The guy wasn't coming from behind us. The guy came from the trail that led to the Devil's Hole. And I refuted it by saying that, no, he came from behind us, and that's what gave us a sense of security. Because, in reality, it did give me a sense of security. In my mind, if the guy entered first, that meant that the trail must be safe and we wouldn't necessarily be loners down in said trail. Well, my husband argued that it made no sense, that he wouldn't have trusted that, that he felt more secure to go in because the presence of the guy leaving the trail made him feel safer, and that's why we felt compelled to go. But I argued that that would have probably freaked me out. He promises he is recalling the events correctly, but I'm sure that I'm recalling it correctly too. Whatever it was, this random guy that appeared from either side convinced us to go in, and there were never any footprints left behind. It makes me wonder what truly happened in the woods that day. Do any of y'all maybe know where I can get said answers? Or have any of you have experienced anything similar? Or know what it could have been? How can two people remember two different scenarios so vividly? And, for any curious people, yes, he did tell me what he saw when I asked. Apparently it was nothing impressive or cool, but basically he said that while he was walking ahead and trying to ignore that ominous environment, he gave one step to look, and he felt a tremendous coldness in a straight line. That's extremely abnormal in nature. A temperature change like that just doesn't happen. And when he looked forward, there was nothing in sight, but he wasn't going to wait for anything to appear, and his gut told him to run away. That's how we ended up getting away from that trail and out of the woods. And that's it. Back in 2018, I was 17 years old and had come back from abroad to visit my friends in my home city for the winter. I remember it was the cold month of December and I was walking back to my apartment after a medical appointment with my mother when I happened to pass by this very old abandoned drama theater that was built in the 1800s, where my grandfather had temporarily worked in his youth which had been closed ever since the 90s. I recall that I hadn't been on that street for a long time, since my childhood, because I would always avoid the old drama theater buildings, as it gave me very strange vibes, so I would always take the other ways home back to the city center. However, that particular day, I happened to take that route for some unknown reason and I took that road with my mother while we discussed my upcoming exams, until she stopped me at the intersection for some odd reason and told me I was going the wrong way. At that very moment, I saw a young blonde girl sitting in a very familiar blue opal car, playing her PSP 3000 in the car. She glanced up at me to look at me all of a sudden, our eyes met, and I felt an odd sense of familiarity and recollection. I froze for a bit in shock, until I heard my mother's voice and decided to quickly turn back. I went home as if nothing happened, and then realized that when I was a kid back in 2009, it was snowing, and I had seen an older teenager with highlights, makeup, and a purple winter jacket looking at me strangely when I was in the car with my dad in the back seat, waiting for my mother to get back from the local store a few blocks away. And that's when it hit me. 
that this person was actually me. She too had moved away quickly after locking eyes with me when I was a kid, and she was dressed in the same attire that I was wearing in 2018. It was almost as if what happened wasn't supposed to happen. I wasn't supposed to be there on that day. Even up to this day, I'm confused. How could I possibly have seen myself from the future, and for me to remember it? I've never told anyone about it because they would just assume that I'm a delusional idiot, or something. This has been something that I haven't been able to explain to anyone. I still sometimes think about it and wonder whether I just fell asleep with my eyes open, or had hallucinated the entire event, but I recall it as blue as daylight. I've even asked my mother about the event, and she blankly stared at me saying that I acted odd that day, wanting to go back to that place for some unknown reason. I don't believe in the supernatural, but after having experienced this event, I think there's definitely something there, which we aren't aware of. This happened last week. I was getting ready to go to work in the morning. I was still putting my makeup on, and the mirror and the table where I put all of my makeup are one and a half to two steps apart from each other. So, I was walking back and forth. When I was at my table, I looked at my earbuds and thought, I'll put this in my bag right away, or else I'll forget it again. Because a day before, I left them at home. So, I put it in my bag right away, and went on getting ready. I arrived at work at 7am and had to wait for my manager to open the door. In the meantime, I was scrolling through social media. I thought of putting in my earbuds, because I don't like people listening to what I'm looking at, if that makes sense. But then I thought, well, there's no one around. I'm waiting in my car, so I won't disturb anyone. So I don't put it on. At work, it was so busy the whole day that I didn't take my earbuds out of my bag. In the afternoon, when I come home, first thing I do is take my phone and earbuds out of my bag and put them on the table. I arrived at around 5pm, I went in my room and put my bag on the table to take my phone out, and before I went for my earbuds, I saw them on the table. I was like, what the hell? I looked in my bag and I couldn't find them. I was so confused. I clearly remember putting it in my bag because I had forgotten it at home a day before, and I was so pissed about it. But what happened here? I guess the earbuds just transported back home. Nor do I misremember it. It's so weird. So, I think today I was someone's glitch in the Matrix. I think this is an interesting story and a little humorous to share, to remind us that some days things are not what we think. So I work at a hardware store and it's really in the middle of nowhere. There's a mall, gas station, and a few fast food places nearby, but really nothing else. I go for lunch and I park near the edge of the parking lot. I drive an old black two-door car. It has a lot of rust on it with some bumper stickers from the old owner, so my car stands out. Next to my car is this RV. It's one that you rent. It was one parking spot over from mine, so we both could open our doors without hitting the other car. This is part of the reason that I park so far. The doors on my car are big, and it's a pain to get in and out of. I stared at the RV thinking, huh, I guess it's that time of year now. I go to get in my car and see the owner of said RV head into it. He stares at my car for a moment. I'm used to this again, old and rusted. And he gets into the RV. I drive off, going to get myself a lunch since, you know, it's lunch. I decide to get some gas as well, since I'm getting close to needing it anyways, and my lunches are an hour long, 
so I have time. I head back to my store and park in the same spot that I always do. I have my spot. Leave me alone. I notice the RV is still there, and I'm kind of confused. I thought he would have taken off by now. I saw him get in. I turn to look back at the store and see him walking out again. Now, this poor guy stares for a few seconds at my car. If this was an anime, there would have been question marks over his head. To him, he had seen me drive away, and now my car was just there again. In the same spot, like it had never moved. The woman he saw get into the car was still sitting there. He gets into the RV again before he pulls away this time. So, it seems that I was the glitch in the Matrix for this poor man. I feel bad for confusing him, but also I can't help but laugh as I think of him telling someone else about this weird black car that drove away yet was back when he came back. I just thought you and your subscribers might get a kick out of this. This isn't a huge glitch, but it was a glitch. I've had many glitches, but suddenly they all stopped. They quickly become a thing that I would occasionally think about, so this brings me to yesterday. I've had a great weekend with my goddaughter and her mother. We just got out of a movie. My goddaughter, only being five, felt that she deserved a treat for behaving during the long movie. So, her mother, who was driving, said, Sure, why not? My goddaughter pointed to a store and said, I want candy from there. I said, That's a clothing store, not a place that sells candy. Her mother said, No, they have candy as well. I laughed and said, Okay, who am I to question a kid about candy? Her mother pulled over and my goddaughter and I got out and went into the store. Okay, let me explain this as detailed as possible. Most stores here in New Jersey, where I'm from, have what I call a mudroom or airlocks. I don't know the real name, but it's essentially doors to enter the store where they have carts, maybe vending machines and benches to sit on before you enter the main store. In this area, on our right, was a young man, late teens to early twenties, wearing all white, shoes, pants, shirts, everything. He looked Latino, or Native American. He had straight shoulder-length hair that was so well done that it looked fake. He was texting on his phone. So, what's the big deal, right? It just felt off. I don't know if it was his pristine appearance or just how out of place he looked. And no, it wasn't a mannequin. When I'm with my goddaughter, I'm on high alert like I'm a secret service protecting the president. I'm hyper-aware. I am very protective of her. So I thought, okay, just a kid who's very OCD about his appearance. This door has two points of entry, and exits south side and the west side. We came in the south side, where I saw the kid in white. She picked out her candy, we paid and left out of the west side. As we did, the same kid was sitting on a bench in the west side in the airlock. I paused and looked at him. Yeah, that's the same kid. Okay, maybe he was just waiting for someone and then moved to the other spot when we were inside. But my gut said something was off. So I said in a playful way, Let's run to the other side where mommy is, as I was holding her hand. I just wanted to see the other spot where the kid was. And, to my amazement, the same kid was still sitting there. How could he be in two different places at the same time? So, the logical explanations. Twins? Waiting for someone? But why would they sit in two different places? Sure, the one sitting on the south side makes sense, it was facing the parking lot. The west side doesn't. It faces a little outside sitting area with a fountain and benches and so on. I know that this isn't a huge glitch, but what if people just don't notice this stuff and it happens all of the time? The evidence that we may be in a simulation could be around us all the time. We're just so distracted by our personal experiences that we don't stop and look around every once in a while. 
Maybe Ferris Bueller was right. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around every once in a while, you could miss the glitches. This is all true. I've always had odd, unlikely, and even seemingly impossible things happen to me. I dare not go into all of them, as I honestly believe something is attached to me. Be it an angel with a sense of humor, plain old weird karma, energy, I don't know. And I don't want to upset whatever it might be. I'll write this anonymously and with no disrespect. This is just to tell you about some of the many items that I've had literally disappear, never to be seen again. Even today, every day, things are not where I leave them. I've learned that I have to be very aware of where I put something. Keys, glasses, remote control. And still, when I look for it later, not only is it not where I put it, but I might find it under other things, like a shirt or a piece of paper that I had not moved. That's my day today. But I've had many items really disappear. I've only, over the last couple of years, become aware of the multiverse theory, or given it any real consideration. Maybe this is where they go. In the 1980s, I was going from the car to our condo with my husband and some family members. The parking spot we'd parked in was a mere 15 or so yards from our door. But at the time that this happened, I had walked at most five yards from the car. I took my giant wad of a keychain from the car and held it in my hand. As we all walked toward the condo, within a matter of seconds, I realized my keys were no longer in my hand. I asked everyone to stop and help me look for them. My husband had known that I had my keys, so he assumed that I dropped them. We all assumed that, although I knew it would have been impossible for me not to have heard substantial clink if they had dropped from my hand to the pavement, considering I had many keys and a lot of unnecessary metal keychains. There was only black pavement between the car and the condo as I hadn't made it as far as the small grassy area. Everyone looked for about 20 minutes, including all through the car and the entire parking lot and grass area, even though I hadn't been near the grass. Those keys never turned up. I had to have remade three car keys, a house keys, mailbox key, and other random keys, like those to my parents' house. None of my family would have taken my keys as a prank, and then never admit to it, and let me spend all of the hassle to replace everything. I couldn't replace the keychains. I lived there for another seven years, and those keys were never found, not even by neighbors. My husband and I lived near San Francisco. The Golden Gate Bridge was celebrating an anniversary which we attended. My husband bought me a really cool t-shirt commemorating the event, and I loved that shirt. It was just the two of us. We got into the car, and of course I had the shirt with me. I even opened it up and looked at it again in the car as we were driving home. It was dark by then, and a little breezy, so we had all the car windows rolled up. We didn't stop anywhere between the bridge and home, but you know what I'm going to say. The shirt never made it to our home, and I never saw that t-shirt again. When we got home, it was not in the car anywhere, and even checking and rechecking the car over the next couple of years, it never turned up. This also happened with a movie rental from a video store. I'd put the VHS into the car, and by the time I got to the video store, it was gone. It was exactly the same several years later with a rented video game. Also. I had a banana disappear from a car, and no telltale smell of old banana ever appeared. These are all car-related, even though they were all in different cars and over many years. I've lost many other things that I know were in my house. 
that were just never located, even after moving. Special things that I put in a special place just vanished. Of course, I've lost things that I can attribute to theft or human error, but these I can't. Are all of these many lost things in a big pile together in some other reality? I would love to hear your thoughts. So that was this week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. Every single one of these stories was weird and bizarre. And I liked the one that was uh, a little more cheeky on its uh, being a glitch in that the person feels like they were probably a glitch to the other person. I can imagine that person that in the RV on that story was like, huh? How did... why is... Uh, I've been there. Anyways. Hopefully you all enjoyed these stories. I know I did. Fantastic collection. Really good time. Great ones, as always. And yeah. Now, if you liked the video, please do hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're new and liked what you heard and want more of this. Because you know I do this weekly, so come on. Anyways. Uh, you can also do the other thing, which is leaving me a comment down below. Normally, on Mondays, I do a word of the week on the screen right now, you will see comments from people that left me comments last week with the word of the week. Every single one of these people left me the word on the screen as their comments. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you to each and every single one of you. Now, this week, it is going to be different. I'm saying that and actually meaning it. Next week, is a compilation of glitch stories from earlier in the year or last year. I'm not sure which it is at this point, but it will be probably a couple hours to three hours long. Because of that, I don't like doing a word of the week on the week before or that week of, because I feel like it kind of gets lost in translation somewhere, or not really lost in translation, but like lost in the, the ether of the creation of the video, and then there's two weeks between, so we're going to do something a little, little weird this time around. What I want you to do is leave me on this video, in the comments down below, your best or favorite dad joke. Now, if you know me or have been to my live streams whenever I've had patience on them, I don't really like dad jokes. Especially groaners, ones that are like, uh, but we're going to do it. Let's make it work. In fact, I will give you a dad joke really quick. That dad joke being... What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Sophisticated. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So leave me your best out joke down below, or your favorite dad joke. Doesn't have to be your best, just one you like. Um, and I'll put it on the screen during the compilation video, probably at the beginning of the video. And I'll appreciate it. So then I'll said, friends, I hope you're having a gorgeous day, and I hope I do see you on the next video. But until then, please, sleep well.